This mini workout is to help relieve you of any hip or knee pain and back pain, but it's also going to help increase your speed as an athlete or just as a person, if you want to walk faster, if you feel yourself slowing down. So this is going to wake up the whole hip region and the knee region. So we're gonna start off just by bending one leg, find a chair, make sure that you've got a nice solid chair. You're gonna bend one knee and you're gonna rock it in front. So just turn it in and that's going to clean out any debris in your hips. So now you're gonna pull that leg behind you and twist it in front. Pull it behind you and twist it in front. Pull it behind you and twist it in front. So you're gonna do the same thing with the other leg. So you're just gonna cross it over and open it out. So that's called, we call these hip cleaners because they're, the way you clean, the dentist cleans the debris in your teeth, like the plaque in your teeth. So these hip cleaners help clean out all those minerals, the same kind of minerals that get in your teeth that clog up your joints. So this is unclogging the hip joint. So knee back and in and knee back and in. Now we're just gonna swing the leg across. So just nice and loose, just swing your leg open and across. Same idea, making sure the heel is up. Don't have it down. So twist it and across and twist and across. So we're gonna do that with the other leg. So open your leg out, lift the heel, swing it across. So just a few times just to loosen up the muscles, get them nice and warm. And now we're gonna start firing up the muscles right from the feet into the hips. So bend your knees, dig those heels into the ground, straighten your legs, Keep your back straight, keep your spine straight, and lift your heels up and go higher. So this fires up all the muscles right through, spiraling right through the calf, right through the quads and hamstrings and into your glutes. So down, heels down, heels up. Straighten the knees. Heels down, heels up. Heels down, heels up. Try it, one leg. Down, up, down, change your legs down, up. You might want to hold the chair with both hands if you have trouble with your balance, but this is going to start waking up all kinds of sleepy muscles. The nervous system wakes up the muscles because your nervous system is what makes your actions occur. Up, down, and up. Okay, so now you should be ready. So we're going to put one foot on the chair. Now make it the outside leg going to bend your knee and this is a stretching exercise so we're going to be stretching the glute muscles the glutes are your bum so bend the supporting leg bend the leg that's on your chair and make sure your foot is flexed so you get this is like a z shape don't have your foot on the seat of the chair because that's going to be counter-effective for the stretch that we're trying to get through the calf so flex your foot as much as you can Bend the knee, and now you're going to take the hips and you're going to turn them this way, as though you're sliding them in a circle. So you're going to twist that way. Now you're going to take your hips and you're going to rock them up and down. So they're doing this. Now you're going to take your tailbone and you're going to push the tailbone under. Pull the tailbone back. And as you pull it back, you're going to feel all kinds of stretches through those hips. Pull it back. Now, when your hips are tight, any time you're tight, you're going to have a loss of mobility. And it's that loss of mobility that causes both pain and it causes you to slow down because you can't move if you're fighting against some tight muscles. So when you're starting to lose mobility in your hips, so just go in a circle, you start to slow down. But because you don't know you're losing mobility in the hips, you naturally just let yourself slow down and slow down and slow down. And it's a, it's a chain reaction that's changed sides that you can avoid simply by doing these exercises. And they're so gentle. So stay relaxed. Make sure that you've got that Z shape. So you've got to work on the positioning. Then you're going to turn your hips this way. And so you're sliding them on a flat surface. Then you're gonna take your hips and you're gonna tip up and down. 
So all this is working both sides of the hips, the one of the leg that's up and the one of the leg that you're standing on, making sure your supporting leg is bent the whole time. Then take your tailbone and tuck under and pull your tailbone back. And you're gonna feel that lovely stretch. If you feel any knife-like pain, stop. But if you just feel a good deep stretch, keep going. The deep stretch is not going to hurt you at all. So we're gonna change sides. You're gonna put the foot up again, the same position, and you're gonna drop forward. The knife-like pain is the nervous system sending a message to you saying that you're going too far and that you could injure yourself. So whenever you feel a knife pain, stop. No point in injuring yourself. That's just plain silliness. And pull back, rock back. So this is much deeper, this rocking forward and back. It's much deeper into the glutes, into the supporting leg, the top muscles of your supporting leg. Okay, we're gonna change sides. So other leg. Make sure you get yourself at a good angle so that you're comfortable with the chair, you're not twisted in some funny angle, and you can rock forward, and you can just move yourself around to get yourself into a comfortable position. Most important is that you've got a nice, solid chair. Okay, and you're pushing down, don't push your chair away because you will find yourself sitting on the floor. Pull back and rock back and drop forward. So all these are for the hips, either front of the hip or back of the hip. Now we're gonna work on the quadricep muscles. So you're gonna take your foot, hold the chair, bend the knees and tuck your tailbone under. So we're going to go in and out of the quadricep stretch. I'm gonna pull that leg back, keeping tucked under. So don't lift your bum up. Keep pushing your bum under. So pull back and under. And if you can't grab your foot, get a towel and grab hold, you know, make a, make a kind of a sling that you can grab hold of your, your foot with. So you, if, as you get used to this little mini workout, you'll have your chair ready and you're going to have your towel ready, your little pieces of equipment. And back, under, and swing back, and under. And each time you do these, you're gonna see that it's just less uncomfortable than before. You're, by liberating these hips and all the muscles related to your hips, your quads and your spine, you're going to move so quickly. So I work with a lot of Olympians and world champions. And when they do this program and this particular workout, which a lot of them do on a daily basis, they go from being fastest in the world to being even faster than they were before because it's so liberating. So this increases your ability to recruit your strength. So you can't recruit your, your, strong, your strength in your muscles if your muscles are tight. So if you have strong muscles and no mobility, you're not able to recruit your muscles to give you that speed. So these exercises are really going to add to your speed. And, and because we're stretching the muscles out, we're liberating the joints. Okay, so just stay on this. Lift, uh, lift the, the leg near the back of the chair and actually face the chair and put your foot flat on that chair. So you're going to lift up your heel, bend the leg and tuck under. So as I was saying, we're liberating the joints. And when you pull the joints apart, there's lubricating fluids that, li that lubricate every joint. And they help relieve any pain. If your joints are so tight, okay, now put your heel down, then the joints are grinding and it's very painful. So now you're gonna go up and drop down. So the weight's on the foot, on the chair, and you're gonna feel the quad being stretched and come out of it quite quickly. So this is getting your psoas muscle, bend your knee, tuck under, shift your weight forward. So this entire heel down into the ground, this entire sequence, everything we've done, is going to give you ridiculous speed and you're gonna feel so good. 
no pain. Marathon runners love this because they feel so good before and after. You don't suffer from the same type of pain and it, you recover immediately. You won't even feel bad the next day. Bend, tuck under, shift your weight forward, dig that heel into the ground. This is the, for the iliopsoas, feeds into your spine. And then this next series is for your quadricep. Okay, so we're gonna change legs. So stay there, use the leg near me. So heel up, bend your knee, tuck under. Shift your weight forward and dig the heel into the ground. There's your iliopsoas. psoas. And this exercise for the psoas and the quad gives you a huge stride. It will make you run faster because you're, you'll be able to stretch further in your run. Up you go, bend. But if you're an athlete and you can move easily, then you're not going to have to burn calories for every movement. The movements will come naturally. So that will end up giving you more energy because you'll have more calories at the end of your run or your, your sport, whatever you've done. And it's always, for me, it's the last man standing. So if you still have energy and your competitor doesn't, you'll win. Tuck under, dig that heel into the ground. So these exercises are for so many, are good for so many things. Energy, speed, pain relief, and rock back. Whew. Okay, so now you're gonna put the leg up near the back of your chair. You're gonna bend the leg you're standing on, and you're gonna take your arm and lift it over. Now you see what I'm doing with my spine? I'm not rounding my back. I'm actually pushing the tailbone out, lifting the arm as an extension of the tailbone. So I'm not rounding like this. So it doesn't matter how low you go, it matters how much you're pulling on the spine. The more you pull on the spine, the more that hamstring's gonna get a workout. You're gonna reach, flex your foot, bend, reach more. Flex your foot, point, reach more. And you're gonna notice you go down. Flex your foot, down you go, sweep around. Now you're gonna take the foot you're standing on, you're gonna flip the foot around and face me and you'll get your long adductor, this long muscle inside your hip. So just move around. Now this, is an exercise that you have to move around to actually find the correct spot because everybody has it in a slightly different place. So some people feel it when they're up and some people have to bend right forward to get that long adductor. So we're gonna change sides, other leg up, the one near the back of your chair, bend your knees, keep your spine nice and straight up with that arm. And you're gonna pull the arm and flex your foot, point your toe, and when you point, reach further, keeping your spine straight. So you're working the tailbone and the arm as an extension of your spine to stretch out that hamstring. And I know you're feeling it. If you're doing this correctly, you're feeling it. Whatever you do, don't round your back. Okay, flex your foot, point your foot, reach and pull. And one more, flex your foot, point your foot, reach, and I think one more. Flex your foot, pushing down, stretching that spine, reach and point. Now you're gonna take the foot you're standing on, flip it around, turn your foot in, and bend down, and you're gonna get this long adductor. So just move around. So if you're suffering from any hip pain or knee pain, even back pain, or you want to move more efficiently as an athlete, or you don't want to be in pain after a big event, then do this workout on a regular basis. Whew, shake it.